Okay, welcome to this instructional video on how to create a proper research or scientific quality table in Microsoft Word. So as part of workshop two, you've been asked to calculate some descriptive statistics for the data that you've been provided, um, which has come from biomechanics, and the test that you did with Nick Owen. And you've been asked to present this data in a table. And then alongside that, you've been asked to display whether or not the data is normally distributed or not based on the statistical tests that you've done in SPSS. And so let's just flick over to a Microsoft Word document. So we always make tables in Microsoft Word. We don't use Microsoft Excel um, and we don't use any other uh, program to do it. We always make them directly in Microsoft Word. Um, so to insert our table, um, we just need to know how many variables we're going to deal with and then whether or not we've got any different groups that we're going to uh, present data for as well. So if we just flick over to the Excel sheet um, that I'm going to put the data in for, then we've just got how many? One, two, three, four different variables that I want to present in this table. Okay, and you can see that I've already calculated the means and the standard deviations uh, down here. So very simple table. I just need to create enough space for four variables, and it's just we're just going to present the data for all the participants combined. We're not going to split it by um, male or female, which we could do if we wanted to, um, but not for the purposes of this video. Uh, so let's just flick back across to my document then. And to insert a table, we're going to go to the Insert tab up here. We're going to go to table and then we're going to insert uh, a two column table and we're going to insert five rows uh, in that table. So one for the row headings and then four for the different variables that we've got. So just insert that there. So you can see a very simple, straightforward looking table uh, into a Word document. And uh, important to note that you always put the variables down the side in different rows here rather than having variables in different columns. And the reason you do that is because imagine you have a case where you want to present 15 variables. Well, it's going to be much easier to present 15 variables down this way in different rows than it is uh, presenting 15 variables along that way in different columns. So variables always go down in different rows here. Okay, so we can just put in uh, our headings. So we'll put in uh, our heading variable, just to, to note that we're going to present different variables down in different rows. And here we've not got any different groups. So, you know, in different examples, you might have um, males and females presented in additional columns that you've input, or you might have uh, pre and post training. You might have different groups like. Uh, caffeine versus no caffeine, for example. Um, in this case, we're literally just presenting the data for one group. So we're not even going to put in a, a heading. We're just going to put in how the data is presented. Um, so the way we're going to present it is our means and our standard deviations. And now we need to know, uh, the way we denote the standard deviation is by using a symbol. It's available in advanced symbols. And we're going to access that, and then we're going to insert the symbol that looks like a little plus or minus down here. So insert that, and we're going to denote SD. And what that tells the reader that's looking at your table is that your data, to centralize that, is presented as the mean plus or minus the standard deviations. So remember, the standard deviation can be above and below the mean. So we have to show that in the way that we present our data. And then we're just going to put in our variables. So we had age. Remember that's going to remember to put in your variables, uh, your measurement scales. So ages and years. We've got height in meters. We've got uh, body mass in kilograms. And then we've got BMI in meters. Uh, uh, sorry kilograms per meter squared. Remember if you're presenting things like squared values or uh, chemical symbols to either subscript or superscript uh, 
the numbers if you need to. So there's our data, uh, our variable, sorry. And now we're just going to insert the data into that table that we've already calculated in Microsoft Excel. So if we just look across into the Excel file, then we're going to look for the variable age. And we can see here for a variable age, we've calculated a mean of 35 and a standard deviation of 9. So we're just going to pop that into our uh, into our table. So our mean was 35. 35. Let's just check that. 35 plus or minus 9. So 35. Uh, once you've already put this, you can just copy and paste that symbol in place. And then there's our data there. And we'll just centralize that as well. And then we can mess around with our, our table later on to make it look a little bit better. Okay, for height then, 1.71 plus or minus 0 0.09. 1.71 plus or minus 0.09. For body mass, 71.3 plus or minus 10. 71.3. Or minus 10. Okay. Always keep the decimal places the same. So it's 10.0 there, so we just need to put in 10.0 in there. And then BMI, then lastly, 24.4 plus or minus 2.9. So 24.4 plus or minus 4.9. Let's check that's correct. Sorry, 2.9. Always double check the data that you put in to your tables and your figures. And we'll just centralize all of that. Okay, so there's our very basic table then. Um, so now what we want to do, just going to move this table down a touch, is we're obviously going to put in uh, a title for our table. So we're going to call this table one. And this is just going to be participant characteristics. But obviously you'd put in a table, uh, a title to denote the data that you're actually showing in that title, in that table, sorry. Okay. Now, that table doesn't look particularly good, um, so there's a number of changes that we need to make to the formatting of that table to make it uh, more research quality or more scientific quality. And the way that we usually present tables in science is there's not, nothing fancy, but we usually present them something like this. So we remove any unnecessary uh, column dividers or row dividers and then we usually bold uh, the top and the bottom line and make sure it's all nice and centralized or uh, change the, the way the data is presented to look a, little, look a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and do that then. And in order to do that, in order to make any changes we want to make, uh, so the first one I want to do is probably just make this this over here. Probably just got a lot of dead space here, so we're just going to move that across. We don't need to have all that space there. We have a much smaller table, it's going to look a little bit better. Uh, we're going to bold these two headings here. So that's like that. And what I'm probably going to do is actually just distribute these columns. So you can see here, if you highlight your table, then you can go up here and you can distribute your columns, and you could distribute your rows as well, just to make them all the same size. Then what we're going to do is, in order to change anything about the table, in terms of the, the row dividers and the line dividers, we're just going to right-click after we've highlighted, and we're going to go to Borders and Shading. So Borders and Shading there, and you can see that brings up uh, a menu that looks like this. And here we've got a space where you can move, remove, or insert dividers of your table uh, as an as as you wish, really. So we don't want any column dividers because it just looks a little bit messy, especially when you've got large tables. So we can just get rid of all of those. And then what I said was we don't want uh, any row dividers either. We want the top and the bottom one, and we want the one that divides the variable headings. We don't want these ones in between it, so we can get rid of those for just now. And then we want a bold line on the top and the bottom of our table. So we can change that. So we can get rid of those ones that are there. We can change the boldness uh, of our lines. And then we can just add them back in. Like that. And if we hit OK, then we've got the beginnings of what looks a little bit better now. So the only thing we need to add in now 
is just a row divider, uh, a row divider, sorry, between our variable headings and our data here. So let's just right click again, borders and shading, and then we're going to put in a line <coughs> slightly less bold than the top and the bottom one, and we'll just add that in there like that. And you can see there, now we've got the beginnings of a table, and obviously it's a fairly small table, there's not much data being presented, um, so we could probably make it a little bit smaller as you wish, like that. Okay, and that's generally how you want to present your tables, so make them look as clean and as clear as possible. You guys are going to have more uh, column headings, and you're going to have probably a few more variables as well to present. Uh, in your tables. Okay, that's the end of this video.